Okay, hello everyone and uh, welcome back. Uh, we're going to start uh, the last uh, the, the last topic of this class, uh, which is about manifolds and duality and all sorts of fun things about geometry. geometry. And today we're going to talk about one of the first ingredients, Tom spectra and the Tom isomorphism. So um, uh, I realized that I only defined everything for complex vector bundles uh, a one month ago or so when I talked about vector bundles. And it turns out that I need real vector bundles now. Uh, but the proofs are really verbatim, so I hope uh, uh, no one is going to be scared by the definition of a real vector bundle and the fact that real vector bundles are classified by maps into B O N or maps into the Grassmannian and so on and so forth. Uh, because of course not all manifolds have a tangent bundle which is a complex vector bundle. That's actually quite rare. Uh, so real vector bundle they are. So, okay, let me start with a definition. So let X be a space and V over X vector bundle. The Tom space of V, which I'm going to write as THB, is the pointed space given by the cofiber of the map V minus zero into V. Well, uh, zero here, I mean zero section. Of course, it's a copy of X sitting inside V. So, um, let me first give you a sort of a more geometric description of this gadget. And then essentially the, the rest of the class is going to be an exercise in generalizing this description to wider and wider settings until uh, we can prove the Tom isomorphism. And you see that uh, the, the proof of the Tom isomorphism will be surprisingly simple at that point. So let me first give you a more geometric thing. So lemma. Now let's suppose that X is an actual uh, topological space and V is an actual vector bundle. Like, um, and so of course it depends only on the homotopy type. But THV is equivalent to the one point compactification. of the base at the point at infinity. You should you'd all have seen the one point compactification at some point in the past. It's just every time you have a, lock, a, a, a topological space, you can get a compact space by adding a point and putting a certain topology saying that the neighborhood of that point, uh, sorry, a set is an open neighborhood of that point if and only if its complement is compact. But it's not really important. Essentially what we are going to need is that the one point compactification of R to the N is S to the N, which should. Um, so there, how, how is V pointed or how do you get the, the pointing of the tom space in the definition? Uh, oh, it's a cofiber. It's a mapping cone. I'm pointing ah, at the cone yes, point. Yes. Oh, if okay. you want, okay, let me actually write the cofiber diagram. You have a square like this, and the pointing is this bottom arrow. Yes. Or right. if you think of the cofiber as a mapping cone, it's pointed at the cone point. Cofibers are always pointed. That's a useful fact that we'll use in the second lecture. But first, this concrete lemma. In fact, this lemma is the traditional definition of the Tom space. Um, and so it will be more convenient and more canonical to think of it as the, that cofiber. So proof, since I don't want to do it canonically and I don't particularly care about doing canonically, uh, I'm just, let's choose a metric on 
B, by which I mean it's just a map from B to the positive real numbers, which is a, a norm, sorry, uh, which is a, a, the, induced by a scalar product. on each fiber. If you want an, a, a quick way of doing that, given what we've done so far, but it's a bit of an overkill, but whatever, is that you, know, you have V lying over X, you know that it can be represented by some, uh, by some map to B or N. We choose one and we choose a nice diagram so that it's a pullback. We can do that. We've proven that every vectors bundle can be obtained like this. And this guy has a metric. Since psi n is, uh, is v x in r infinity times x such that, so sorry, not b o n, I mean, it is b o n, but let me call it like the nth Grassmannian. Um, such that V is in F of X, where F is this map. And you know, you can just take the norm in R infinity, and this gives you a, scal a nice scalar product on each fiber. Uh, in fact, with uh, some effort, you can turn out to prove that the choice of such an F is equivalent to the choice of a metric. Plus, eventually, it's not important. Anyway, you can do that. There are also simpler ways of doing that using partitions of unity and so on and so forth. But you can do that. And so note that V minus zero then is equivalent to the unit sphere, which is, you know, V in V of norm one. That's because you have, uh, well, you clearly have an inclusion here, but you have an inverse map here sending V to V module of norm. And that's, uh, well, you do a straight line homotopy, this gives you a homotopy equivalence. On the other hand, V is equivalent to X. Just the, the, the projection, at the level of underlying space is just, uh, it's just an equivalence. I am just collapsing everything to zero. I have an inverse map that's exactly the zero section. Because the underlying space of a vector bundle is not particularly interesting. So the, the cofiber of V minus zero into V is the same thing as the cofiber of S of V mapping to X. Since I'm just replacing the spaces with equivalent spaces. And here I'm taking the mapping cone of this map. And I'm going to show you that this is exactly the one point compactification. So remember, how does this work? Well, the cofiber is the mapping cone, so we can write it like this. It's this iterated push out. As we have seen last semester, the, the cofiber can or the, the cofiber can be explicitly computed as the mapping cone. And as I said before, this is pointed here. This cone point that I'm adding. And I claim this is exactly what I'm going to call SV, that is the one point. No, sorry, not SV. And this is claim exactly this equivalent to the one point compactification. Of v. And to do so, let me construct actually a map from, uh, sorry, let's take a map from SV uh, times 0, 1 to the one point compactification of V. And actually, it's probably easier if I construct a map from SV uh, times the, the half open interval into V. And this is just going to be. Oh geez, did I? Oh well, I I, I chose the the wrong. 
the direction doesn't matter. The formula is a bit more complicated, but the idea is you rescale V so that for T equals one, you get zero. And as T goes to zero, this goes to infinity. So what's the, I think you need this formula to be just, you know, the graph of one minus T over T zero one is just a hyperbola branch like this. So we're just rescaling. And so this clearly gives a map zero one union S V times one X is a homeomorphism. Actually, not just a map. With inverse is essentially sending V in the pair V over V comma, uh, whatever the inverse of this rescaling is. Um, I think it's V plus one over absolute value of V, yeah. I hope I'm not screwing this up, but for zero, it goes to one. And uh, as the norm tends to zero, these also, no. Uh, oh, no, 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 sorry. That's okay, that's much better. And as the norm tends to zero, these tends to zero. No, 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 sorry. Uh, okay, you know what? Let me not try to, to improvise this inverse. This is obviously an invertible function. So, you know, pick the inverse. Uh, sorry. I, I, I chose the diff a different function in my notes. Oh, that doesn't matter. It's just, this is clearly a homeomorphism. And so these two spaces have the same one point of gratifications. Oh, sorry, I should have said one important thing. Uh, when X is compact, this is the one point. Otherwise, uh, this thumb space is not compact because you, you, can, you can lose pieces at infinity of X. Okay, and that's the proof. So you can think of, well, we'll see a much better way of thinking about the Tom, spec, the Tom spaces in a second. Uh, but you can think of this Tom space as sort of a generalization of uh, how you make Sn out of Rn, you add a point at infinity. And here you have a vector bundle and you add a point at infinity. That's the same for every fiber. Um, now, if the base space is compact, this tells you that you're just one point compactifying everything. If the base is not compact, uh, well, of course, you might lose stuff in the, in, going at infinity in the base, but you're still adding a point of infinity in each fiber. And one way of describing this is that you are one point compactifying each fiber and then collapsing the, the one points you've added. And that's the kind of perspective I'm going to describe now. But first, a corollary out of this. Well, OK, that's not a corollary. And you know, let's do this later, because this works only when the bases are compact. Well, the, the corollary I want to state is true for all, for all bases. So let me state it after I can prove it. Uh, so OK, here is the following lemma. So let P from B to X be a vector bundle, classified by some F from X to B O N. Actually, okay, I'm fixing the rank here, but it's actually irrelevant. Actually, maybe I should say this joint union of B O N. 
since I, I, I can allow different ranks on different connected components of X. Uh, then the tom space of V is the collimit of the composite. X goes to this joint union, V O N goes to spaces pointed where B O N into spaces pointed is given by the O N action on S N seen as the one point compactification of R to the N. So if you want the ON maps to, no, no. that's not. So this is seen as the one point compactification of R to the N. And this of course fixes the point at infinity because it's just acting on R to the N whichever and fixing the point of infinity. So that's the point. You can think of this as a functor, this composite functor, you can think of the functor as the functor that sends x to the one point compactification of vx, which I'm going to start writing as svx. So let me see notation. V, uh, real vector space, SV is going to be the one point compactification. Um, I'm always bad with this. Can you recall what ON is? So uh, ON, sorry, is just a, a M dimensional orthogonal group. If you want matrices in M and R such that uh, this is the identity. Or if you want linear endomorphisms that preserve the metric or, uh, I don't know, choose your, your favorite description for this thing. Excuse me, Dennis, uh, could you go once more uh, on how uh, this uh, action on SN gives a map? from BON to spaces? Yes. So um, let me be precise, actually. So remember, and now I need to define you how, I need to go back to how we defined the infinity category spaces star. Um, so spaces star, remember, I was defining it as the simplicial nerve of can star. Okay, right. That's not the only possible way, but that's the one I've, I've chosen in this class. And the point is that ON gets you a map into continuous maps preserving the base point from SN to SN. Remember, this was the CAN complex yeah. whose N simplices were maps like, oof. Yeah, I mean, this I, yeah, this I can believe. Mm -hmm. And this is, this preserves composition. This is actually a map of topological monoid. Well, sorry. Of, uh, of simplicial monoids, since I define it only as a can complex. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let me actually be super precise and here saying that I'm putting sing. Mm -hmm. So what I have, I have a map from, del from the topological delta n into o n, and I want to get a map from s n times topological n to s n that preserves the base point at each stage, but okay, that's... Yeah, but th this 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 is actually okay. I was wondering what happens next. I mean, if you have this map, then... Um... Okay. Ah, then you use... Uh, okay, B -O oh yeah, sorry, B-O-N, I should say it is... I don't remember if I gave it as an exercise. I think I gave it as an exercise at some point, maybe for O-N discrete. But B-O-N is actually the same thing as the simplicial nerve of the can enriched category with one object and seeing ON as endomorphisms. Oh, okay. Because, uh, well, what is this guy? This guy is a connected space with mm -hmm. ON as loops. 
Right. Okay, this guy is definitely okay, so, a connected space. Yeah, this space. was the missing piece for me. Okay. This guy is clearly a connected space. Uh, and you compute its loops, uh, and its loops is exactly uh, on, by a single n, I guess, if you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think okay. I gave it as an exercise. I'm not sure I remember. Maybe I did it only for G, a, a discrete group, though. But the proof is the same. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Other questions about this point? No. Okay. So let me decrease in size this thing and put it uh, somewhere where it doesn't. Uh, well, I don't have a good place to put it. But okay, I want to go back here and try to give you this why you, sh why you should believe this. This is how do you compute the limits in, in pointed spaces, the co limits in pointed spaces? So you compute the co limits in spaces, and then you get a, uh, the co limit indexed by the, the, base, the constant factor at the base point, and you have to collapse it. Remember, we discussed this much time, a long time ago. So, how does what is this co limit? You are literally one point compactifying each fiber, so replacing Vn by, by Svn, by this one point compactification, and this gives you what's called a, a stable, uh, sorry, a spherical vibration, a fiber bundle whose fibers are, are spheres together with a section, a copy of X. And what you're doing, okay, I'm collapsing this copy of X just to a point. And that's exactly what the Tom space is doing. Okay, and the proof of this lemma is actually essentially what I said, only said better, but, uh, uh, but the important fact is that you understand the intuition about what the Tom, and I think this is actually the best description of what the Tom space is. Uh, you are one point compactifying each fiber and then collapsing all these, these points you've added to just a single point. Okay, so proof. Are there questions about the statement before I prove it? No. Okay, so the first, as before, well, okay. uh, so we, we, let's consider V minus zero goes to X. This is a vibration. This is a fiber bundle. In particular, a vibration. So In particular, V minus zero fiber product over X of the little point in X is exactly the fiber minus zero. When here I'm taking homotopy pullbacks. That's because when one leg is a vibration, the homotopy pullbacks is literally the classical pullback. Now, notice that X, we can write X as the co-limit of X, of little x. This is a game we're going to play. Uh, this is essentially the universal property of the co-limit, if you unwrap it. I think I used it before, but if not, I'm going to use it several times. If you take the co-limit of, of one point indexed by a space, well, whatever you're going to get, you're going to get the space. The homotopy co-limit, of course. Is not true for one code. I mean, it doesn't make sense for one code in spaces. And now, by this, therefore, by descent, uh, you have the co limit over x and x of this pullback is just they can move the pullback out. This was one of the key property of uh, co limits in spaces. And so that's just V minus zero.
Okay, so we want to compute the co-limit for x in x of dx minus zero to, well, okay, the co-limit dx. I can do the same deal for vx, or I can just notice that vx is contractible, so it's a pointer, so it's uh, just sort of cosmetic that I'm writing v, v instead of x in this formula. Sorry, the cofiber of this map of co-limits. And now the, the key point is that I can take the co-limit out. So we have a map cofibers from arrows in spaces to pointed spaces. And this is a left adjoint. It's the left adjoint uh, of, the, of the functor sending a pointed space x to the arrow. point mapping to x. And that is the universal property of the cofiber. Right, you have a map yz going here. That's the same thing as a map of pointed spaces from the cofiber. So I call this f into x map of pointed spaces. That's the universal property of the pushout. So the cofiber is a left adjoint. In particular, it commutes with homotopy co-limits. So the tom space of V, I can move the co-limit out and get the cofiber Vx minus zero into Vx. And this, this cofiber is by the same argument. If you want, it is literally the argument for the tom space over a point, which is undoubtedly compact. This is exactly the one point compactification of Vx. And the functoriality, and this is this identification that I wrote is, is absolutely functorial uh, in, in the vector space V. Remember, a functor out of V or N, you can think of it as vector space equipped with uh, with a metric actually because that's why I chose O N. So this is co-limit. And here's the trick that I am taking the co-limit in pointed spaces. Otherwise the cofiber would not be a left adjoint and this formula wouldn't work as it shouldn't because the co-limit in spaces has a whole other line at infinity that they need to collapse to get the tom space. Okay, other questions? No. Okay, so from now on, I'm actually secretly taking uh, um, T, this is the definition of a tom space. So for example, let me define a rank and spherical vibration is a functor from X to pointed spaces. Let me call it S such that S of X is equivalent to Sn for every x, non-canonical, of course. And you can do, you know, an arbitrary rank spherical vibrations. And we can define the tom space of a rank of a rank n spherical vibration as the co-limit. And arguing as, as I did before, you can think of these as a fiber bundle, uh, 
with fiber Sn together with a section that gives you a base point at every, at every point. Uh, you might ask, okay, can't I just take instead the unit sphere bundles? This seems a lot more natural as a definition of a spherical vibration. And the answer is yes and no. Yes, in the sense that you can define such a, a fiber bundle of, uh, of fiber Sn minus one, that's definitely allowed. Uh, and from that, you can get a, a rank and spherical vibration in this sense, but the vice versa is not, is, is not true. It's actually a complicated problem in geometric topology. You cannot always fill it to a disk bundle, which is something you need to do here. Um, and so this is more general, and I'd rather work with, with this for various reasons. OK. But we're going to generalize it further. However, before I generalize further, let me give you an example of oh, that. That's, that's interesting, at least of these gadgets, uh, because I'm talking about vector bundles because secretly I'm thinking of smooth manifolds. But these rank and spherical vibrations are useful because they allow you to talk also about topological manifolds without having to, to worry about linearizing. So let me give you an example of the tangent uh, spherical vibration of a topological manifold. So example, let M be a topological manifold. Of dimension N. Uh, then the tangent uh, spherical vibration is the functor M to pointer spaces sending X to the cofiber of M minus X going to x to m okay i have to tell you two things i have to tell you ex why this is well defined and why is this actually a spherical vibration why this is well-defined, it's uh, easy because I'm going to trick these and, and as, as uh, writing it as a pullback again and taking M times M minus the diagonal copy of M fiber product over M of X. And as before, you can see that these actually give me a functor. If you believe in, in uh, in the existence of a natural transformation. Well, you should believe it. Anyway. So this is actually a, a natural transformation from the point to M. Uh, you, if you believe in the existence of such a natural transformation, uh, which is just, if you want, the diagonal section of this, of, in this diagonal section of this vibration, and then you believe in the existence of this guy. So this is indeed a functor that I'm telling you. And now we just need to check that for every X, this is a fiber. Yeah, this is a, sorry, this is a sphere. But remember, that when you had open coverings, this gives you homotopy pushouts. This we discussed last time. So recall you the open subsets. You have this guy with a homotopy pushout. And so we are going just to take a small neighborhood of X that's homeomorphic to R to the N. So I'll take U inside M neighborhood of X homeomorphic to R to the N. This 
tells us that we have the following homotopy pushout. I'm taking u and m minus x as as a, a, uh, as open covering of m. That's of course. So now we have our m mod m to the x here. And here we have u mod u minus x, and these are homeomorphic because cofiber of parallel arrows in a homotopy pushout square are homeomorphic. And this is homotopy equivalent to Sn. This is Rn mod Rn minus zero, and as discussed before, this is just S to the n. So this is indeed the tangent moment. And I think I'll leave it as an exercise. If M is smooth, this is equivalent to X goes to S to the one point compactification of the tangent bundle. That's because you just take a tubular neighborhood of the diagonal inside n times m and do the same trick again. And use, I don't know, maybe the but yeah, tubular neighborhood of the diagonal is enough. You need to know what the normal bundle of the diagonal is. But if you know smooth manifolds, uh, that's an easy exercise, actually. Then tubular neighborhood of the diagonal using, sorry, the normal bundle of the diagonal is indeed the tangent bundle of your manifold. Actually, I'm, yeah, yeah, I think I can put this as on, on the exercise sheet, actually. I mean, if I basically gave the solution now, but writing it down is, uh, is interesting. So you see, this is a generalization of the tangent bundle. Of course, it's not a vector bundle anymore, but if your manifold is not smooth, you don't expect it to be able to linearize stuff locally, because being able to linearize things locally is exactly being smooth. Uh, in fact, you can do something better. You can, this is a stable, sorry, this is a spherical vibration, but you can actually upgrade it to what's called a micro bundle, which has a little bit more structure. Uh, although I'm not going to do that. Uh, but it is the first, this is the, the first question. If you have a space with a spherical vibration, can I turn it into a topological manifold? The first question is, okay, can I take the spherical vibration into a micro bundle? And for a smooth manifold, can I take the spherical vibration into a, uh, vector bundle. This is the subject of surgery theory, which I'm not uh, going to discuss in this class, unfortunately, because it's a very fun topic. But this is the time we have. Questions about this, this example? This is exa an example is going to be important because, uh, as you might not be surprised by, this is indeed the thing that's going to control the orientation in for Poincaré duality, for a T duality, actually, I should say, the spectral question of Poincaré duality. Uh, I think it's a fun example. Uh, it is very easy to define, and it does give you a notion of tangent bundle for, for general things. Yes? I'm still confused. Why do we have to define m minus x as um, this uh, pullback? And oh, I just... Sorry? Why do we have to define m minus x as this pullback and can't just work with m minus x? Oh, it was just to convince you that this is really functorial. If you, if you believe me that it's functorial, then, uh, uh, then it's OK. Yeah. Yeah, just that I don't want to pass too many details under the rug, even if they're kind of standard and obvious, but it's still, you know, so it's always good to be a tiny bit precise. Since I'm being factorial on, a, on an infinity groupoid here, which might be still a bit confusing. And the, the trick usually for these things, you build something as a vibration where, you know, where taking the fibers of a vibration is always quite clearly factorial. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so now let me define the main the main subject of today. Uh, 
which is uh, so if s from x to space star is a spherical vibration of whichever rank the thumb spectrum of s is just the suspension spectrum of sigma infinity oh sorry of tom s so i'm going to write it as x to the s and when v s is going to come from a vector bundle i'm going to call it x to the v um, i hope i'm not going to have to write s x to the s to the v because that's kind of a waste of uh, superscripts anyway it's a super and that therefore this is the same thing as the co-limit over x in x of sigma infinity s of x since sigma infinity is a left adjoint and so it commutes with homotopy co-limits and this uh, actually suggests us to take a further generalization of this notion of thumb spectrum to the level to notion of stable spherical vibrations so definition a stable spherical vibration is essentially the same thing as a virtual vector bundle compared to a vector bundle but i'm going to write it this is a functor x goes to sp i still want to call it s such that s of x is equivalent to some suspension of the sphere spectrum for every x and n will be locally constant necessarily and i'm going to call it the rank of the stable spherical vibration and the uh, the tom spectrum of a stable spherical vibration is just its co-limit. And I'm still going to write it xs. So, yeah. You should have all the time to discuss orientability. So let me give you some examples first. Uh, so for example, so you know that you have a map for every n, you have a map from B O N to pointed spaces, sorry, to spectra uh, that sends uh, the point to the sphere spectrum. You can write this as the composite of this map. So this one is the one sending the action of O N on S N, and then you send it to spectra, and this is sigma infinity minus N sigma infinity. Sigma minus n sigma infinity. Composite. And you can check quite clearly that this diagram commutes. Because the action of ON in SN plus one is literally leaving its last coordinate invariant. Oh, I forgot to say, oh, I should have said something about Tom spaces before. Well, okay, I'll say it after this example. So we have a map BO mapping into spectra. So I can form a stable spherical vibration from every ve virtual vector bundle. I.e., if I have a virtual vector bundle, say of rank zero, although it's not very important, to be O, 
and variable extra boundary memories are mapped to BO times Z. So I'm just taking the zero component here. Oh, sorry, let me call it D. I can form a stable spherical vibration. SV, which is just this composition. And BO, I actually don't know what to call this thing. I think I'm going to call it J because it's related to the J homomorphism. Uh, Excuse me, Nice. could you scroll a bit up just for a second? Okay, thanks. I'm saying ON acts on, on SN, therefore it acts on its N the suspension, the suspension spectrum by functoriality. That's all what this first line is saying. Yeah, I just wanted to copy it. Yeah, okay, yeah, let me pause a second so you can all... Okay. Okay, let me define one of the protagonists for the end of this class, which is MO is going to be the thumb spectrum of the universal virtual vector bundle. And in one second, I'm going to give you uh, uh, a description. But first I have to tell you one thing about thumb sp spaces that I forgot to mention. But this definition should be clear, right? And since it was uh, important uh, uh, in in last talk in, in last in last lecture, since I mentioned MU is defined as the Tom spectrum of the composite BU goes to BO goes to spectrum. So I promised you last time that I would define you such a spectrum, and now I. I did. And in fact, this is, if you think about it, is the universal Tom spe spectrum for a complex vector bundle, virtual complex vector bundle instead of a virtual real vector bundle. Since virtual complex vector bundles are the same thing as maps into BU. Okay, uh, but first, unfortunately, I made a mistake and I have to put you a remark. So suppose that S, S prime, sorry, S from X to pointed spaces and S prime from X prime into pointed spaces are, uh, 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 spherical vibrations. Then S smash S prime, it goes from X prime to pointer spaces, and sends X X prime to S of X smash S of X prime is also a spherical vibration. Because smashing two spheres is a sphere and the ranks sum. And in the case they come from Vector bundles, this corresponds to the direct sum of vector bundles. And uh, the Tom space of S smash S prime is the Tom space of S smash the Tom space of S prime. And that's because uh, smashing commutes with co-limits separate in each variable, since it's a, it has a right adjoint taken by the space of pointed maps. So we have the co-limit over x x prime, x times x prime of uh, s x smash s x prime is the same as the co-limit in x s x smash co-limit in x prime x prime of s x prime. It's all I'm saying. And in particular, uh, if I have a V a vector bundle, the 
thumb space of V plus one, plus one copy of the trivial vector bundle is the same thing as the suspension of the thumb space of V. Because the, the thumb space of the trivial vector bundle over one of rank one over a point is just S1. Thumb space of R over the point is just S1. And V plus one is corresponds to the external direct sum of vector bundles with this vector bundle. Okay. Okay. Let me give you one second to digest this. This is just pretty much what you would expect when you think about it as one point compactification. If you take the one point compactification of V plus V prime, that's the same thing as the one component compactification of V is mesh, the one point compactification of V prime. Because it's just saying that, yeah, it works. Um, and so let's try to describe MO. So this map BO to spectra is the co-limit of functors BON into spectra. And okay, and so MO, let me call this functors, let's say, I call this functor J, let me call this functor JN. So MO is necessarily the co limit of BON JN over N. And uh, We can write it actually, and and uh, okay, yeah. But J n is the uh, nth d suspension of the stable spherical vibration associated to uh, the uh, to the tautological vector bundle psi n over b o n that was just by definition And therefore, B O by the remark I just made, this is just the nth the suspension of the suspension of the thumb space of psi n. And note that the, this map from this guy to B O J uh, sorry B O N B O N plus one J N plus one is induced by this map. coming from the fact that we have such a Cartesian square. That's because the topological bundle is the universal bundle. So, MO is the spectrum associated yeah, to the pre-spectrum tom psi n because this is literally the, by definition it was co-limit the, the spectrum associated to a pre-spectrum is literally, sorry, it's literally this co-limit. 
And that's actually why I'm saying this. I'm saying this because this is probably the definition of MO that you find in most of the literature, certainly in most of the literature written before the year 2000. Um, actually, even earlier, I think this definition as a co limit that I gave you is more, much more recent. It comes from a paper with five authors that I never remember. Uh, Endo, Gettner, Rask, Blumberg, I think was also in the authors. Uh, I don't remember the, the list of the authors, but it's, a, it's very convenient. It allows you to, to work with it much more neatly. As you will see, our proof of the Thomas isomorphism is going to be much, much simpler. Uh, but I wanted to show you the connection with uh, the classical definition. Okay, we'll, we'll never, we'll basically, okay, no, I'm lying. Uh, in, in the very end, we will use this definition to, to do some stuff. But m most of the class will not use this definition, but I think it's still sufficiently concrete. I gave you an explicit pre spectrum given by explicit spaces, which you can think of as the Grassmannian and points. You can actually write down the points and the bounding maps. So this is not a very mysterious object. In general, perhaps I should mention that Tom spectra are spectra that are easy to describe. They tend to be very easy to manipulate and easy to work with. Um, and as you will see now that we're going to talk about orientation and the Tom isomorphism, you, you'll see what I mean when I say that they're simple. Questions about this before I change, I slightly change topic. No. Okay. So, okay, let me talk about orientations now. And I'm going to talk about orientation of stable spherical vibrations, I think it's the generality in which we are working. Uh, but I will explain why this corresponds to the classical notion of orientations of vector bundles. So let E now be a homotopy ring spectrum. And this actually I was just complaining yesterday uh, with, with a person that it would be so much simpler if I could work with e an infinity ring spectrum, even if you use something in generality. But all the examples we care about will be infinity ring spectra. On the other hand, in this class, I never defined infinity ring spectra. So I will uh, just use homotopy ring spectra and follow the classical literature. This has the advantage that they will get some slightly more general results, although it's not completely clear how useful that additional generality is, but it will make some proofs a little bit more awkward. Uh, that said, you know, this is, uh, this is the thing that we have to work on. Okay. So for, throughout, for, for the next of today, is going to be a homotopy ring spectrum and probably even homotopy commutative, by which I mean just a, a monoid, uh, sorry, an algebra object in H sp. So we have maps eta from S to E and mu E tensor E to E, satisfying associativity and unitality up to homotopy. Okay, so a stable, okay, an orientation or Tom class on a stable spherical vibration of rank N. is a map, and sorry, this is an E orientation, I should say, because this depend, this notion depends on the, on the ring spectrum that we are considering. It's a map from X, S to Sigma and E, and I'm going to call it theta, 
for Tom, uh, such that for every X in X, the map E tensor S X, sorry, no, uh, the map S X going to, and remember this is non-canonical equivalent to S N. Uh, to ES, sorry, sigma n, to sigma n e corresponds to a unit of phi zero of e. This is not uh, dependent on the particular choice of identification here, of course. Since at, at the best I can change this uh, on at level of homotopy classes, at best I can change the sign of the element and uh, well, if you want or if you wanted or more canonically to a generator of classes maps. As a, as a P0 module. This is a free Pi0 module of rank one. This is, I'm using this notion for this notation for homotopy classes of maps. I think I used it before. This is canonically by choosing any identification of SX with sigma and S. This is a pi zero E module of rank one. So it makes sense to say that an element is a generator. But I'm going to think of it in terms of unit of pi zero E after doing an identification. Okay. In particular, the map E tensor SX to sigma and E, which is obtained by multiplication. So actually let me write it. Is an equivalence. Which is the important fact. Is this definition clear? Because I'm just about to write it in an equivalent way. And then we'll see a couple of examples when E is HF2 and when E is HZ. And we will see that this corresponds to classical notions of orientations. But now we're going to be allowed to uh, have different and crazier uh, ring spectra, or I guess, Maybe we're not much allowed, but okay. Hmm. So remark, giving a map from this co-limit is equivalent to giving a natural transformation Sx into sigma and x, where this is constant functor. And often we will think in, term, in these terms of, an, of a natural transformation from Sx to sigma and e, such that uh, uh, that product map is an equivalence. Okay, let me give you examples. Uh, 
okay. If E is HF2, every stable spherical fibration is orientable, admits an orientation. In fact, uh, in fact, it is. Uh, In fact, you will see that by this description that the orientation will also be canonical. This corresponds to the fact that uh, Poincaré duality holds with mod two coefficients for no matter what manifold you have. Yeah, the condition being orientable is, is empty for uh, uh, so this is a simple thing. Okay. Let's see why. So the point, so the, the point is that the mapping space in spectra from HF2 to HF2 is the same thing as homomorphism of abelian groups from F2 to F2 by the recognition principle. If you recall, we discussed that abelian groups embeds fully faithfully into spectra. And so that's just F2. That is, we have the zero map and the identity and nothing else. And in fact, this is a discrete space even. So, uh, so we can take, uh, What did I want to say? No, hold on. Uh, that's not quite what I wanted to say. What I want to say, the maps in spectra from the sphere to HF2 are equivalent to omega infinity of HF2, which is just F2 again. And so, if you want to take maps from S, from sorry, from XS to HF, from uh, say sigma n HF two, remember this is the same as limits from maps from SX to HF two, and this is discrete with two objects. But moreover, we are not interested in, in random maps. We're interested in maps that hit a unit when, uh, when uh, the maps that hit a unit when you restrict it here. And this contains so the space of Tom classes or of orientation is exactly the limit by taking the, well, let me call it the identity or the, the maps that, that hits one, and that's just a contractible space. So, yeah. The space of Tom classes is contractible. In particular, it's non-empty. But even more, it's uh, it's just a point. So an F two orientation is no data. Questions about this example? And sorry, this is this was well. This is also a true fact, but that's not what I wanted to use. <laughs> Could you repeat just the last line? So uh, these, I'm, 
the, the, the space of Tom classes is the subspace of these maps, such that every component here corresponds to a, to a generator, right? That's by definition. A Tom class yeah. is, a, is a point here. Such, uh, so I, I, I'm taking the limit, not of all maps, but only of the connected components that correspond to generators. Okay, thanks. I think that clarified it. But that, but that connected component is just a point. So it's, it's not particularly. Okay, and in the Z case, you will have two points which will ruin the thing. Yes, I'm going to do the Z case uh, now. Uh, I'm just going to do the Z case in one second. Uh, further questions about the F2 case, though, before I go do the Z case? Um, yeah, so on the right hand side, the mapping space, you forgot the end suspension, right? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, and I guess I should say that this, yeah. Yeah, okay, this is, so this is the end suspension of S non canonically. So, um, so the, it's still a discrete space with two objects. Ah, uh, because it's just a shift somehow or. Yes, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'll say that maybe let me uh, write it maps from S and sigma S, sigma and F2 is the same since sigma is an equivalence. Discrete space. In fact, it's just the space is 0, 0,1. Literally, it's just a set with two objects, 0, 0,1. So in fact, I'm, I'm doing all sorts of non-canonical identifications here, but uh, it boils down. I have a discrete set with two objects, one of which is zero and the other I call one. And so it's, this identification is actually secretly as canonical as you can possibly have. Uh, you just don't have any space to, to have any choices here, which is what makes things work, of course. Does this answer your question? I'll assume it, I'll take it as a yes. I think maybe I shouldn't. Now let's say another example. So E equals HZ. Um, let me say, do, say it for a vector bundle. So you can adapt these easily to stable spherical fibrations, actually. But uh, an orientation, let V be a vector bundle of rank M, an orientation, an E orientation, is the same thing as a null homotopy. of the composite. X goes to B O N goes to B C two. Where this map is the induced by that O N to C two. I uh, thought so I never use the formula for the determinant. What I'm going to use in fact is that it's the projection on the pi node of O N. This is a determinant map. In particular, IE, the same thing as a lift, to the fiber, which is what's usually called BSON. And then this is a, a classical statement that this corresponds to a trivialization of the determinant bundle, which is the classical notion of orientation. Maybe you've seen it in a slightly different setting. You can find a bunch of charts such that 
the gluing map for those charts are not in ON just, but in SON. Or if you want, another way of proving it is that BSON classifies vector bundles of rank N together with the trivialization of the determinant bundle. Doing the same proof that I did for BON. Well, actually, I did for BUN, but uh, the same argument applies. And if you've seen it in exercise sessions, the fact that maps into BG classify, G, classifies G torsor, G, G principal bundles. That's another way of saying this is that a vector, a vector bundle together with an orientation in the classical sense is the same thing as an SON torsor, which is probably how people write it in the differential geometry, differential topology books. These are all different ways of saying the same fundamental content. But I'm going to claim that HZ orientations are the same thing as a null homotopy of this map. And in fact, this C2 here is secretly Z cross, the invertible elements in Z. So, Let's do here. We take this, we take maps from X, B into, uh, into sigma N of H, Z. As before, this is the limit for X and X of maps of, well, let me denote, I, I, it's a bit of user notation. This is, this is the notation I told you for a space. I'm using it for its suspension spectrum, but the tool, actually, no, let me be pedantically annoying and put sigma infinity SV to sigma HZ here. And now notice that these, as I said before, this is on Z discrete Z module, so it's the Alman McLean spectrum of a discrete Z module. Actually, it's H of a discrete, blah, 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 blah. And sorry, of a Z module of rank one, a free Z module of rank one. And so if I take the space, the subspace of Tom classes here, this is the limit of, of the, the set of generators. Oh, how should I denote it, this? Well, it's the set of generators of H N S V X, I guess. This is Z module of rank one, sorry. Maybe I should mention this is exactly HN of SVX. Because the pi note of the, is the, this S mod, Z module of rank one is of course just the pi note of this mapping space, which many, many months ago, we noticed it was HN of the space. They reduced as HN. Not that it changes anything, but we might be precise as long as we're doing this. And uh, and this is, again, canonically, you can identify it with uh, one or minus one. maps from X sorry uh, yeah uh, 
you wanted to see. Sorry, one second. Uh, okay, the Thomas Morphism, I think I'll do it the first time next week, but let me finish this. Uh, Right, so this is the same thing as, so this is a functor. You can, think, you can think of this as a functor from X to uh, abelian groups of rank two. Right, the generators of H tilde and S V X are an abelian group of rank two. No, what I want to say. No, 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 not yeah. To to free rank modules. Free, free Z modules of rank one. Yeah. No. Okay, let, let me see where I want to go because maybe the, the point is that this is the same thing as a map from X to BC2. Yes, sorry, that was that was silly. I, well, another way of thinking it uh, is functors from X to freezy modules of rank one. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I. Okay, sorry, I'm kind of lost myself in this proof. I got a bit confused. Let me tell you how you conclude from these, uh, the, the, the thing, and then I'll, I'll try to reconstruct one second this, this missing step. Uh, but the point is that, okay, once you have that, you can just look at, if you want to identify this map, and yeah, the, the first observation is that on acts on uh, h tilde svx via the determinant map so this so this factor here that sends x to the to the set of generators of H and tilde SVX factors through BON. Of course, and factors through the map the factor BON set uh, that uh, corresponds I mean, to the action of on in the on the set plus or minus one by the determinant map And 
Oh, of course, it's not maps. For, uh, that's what I'm, I was trying to prove something false. So of course, the set of orientation is not the set of maps from X to BC2, but it's the set of, uh, of null homotopies of that map. And I, 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 the, the, and I was trying to I was trying to prove the wrong thing. I was trying to say that this map is an orientation, but a null homotopy of this map is an orientation. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, okay. Good, 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 good. Let me. So, sorry for this confusion. I was trying to prove the wrong thing. So let me start all that. So we are we are all good here. That that this map is the, this space is the limit over all x and x of the set of generators of this abelian group. But this, you can think of it as a functor from x to the, the category of free z modules of rank one with a choice of generator. That's definitely, or if you want, with. But this is okay. This is a contractible category. This is uh, this is silly. So you can think of it as, i.e., a natural transformation, a natural isomorphism of the functor. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Sorry. That's. Let me put this. What is a generator of H and tilde S V X is the same thing as an isomorphism Z goes to H and tilde S V X. So we are taking the limits of the space of isomorphism, well, the set of isomorphisms really, but okay. Like this, and that's just the same thing as the space of natural isomorphisms between the constant functor Z and the functor X goes here. Okay, yeah, this works. Perfect. Um, okay, now what's the point? The point is that the category is a funct this is a natural isomorphism in the category of functors from X to BC2 to actually to free Z modules of rank one. And the category of free Z modules of rank one is just equivalent to BC2. You have only one possible object and C2 as automorphisms. So this is a null homotopy of the map of the functor in fun X BC2, which is the same thing as maps from X to BC2, sending X to H and tilde S V X. And what I was trying to, to say before with saying that this action factors through the action of O N is exactly telling you that this map, this new homotopy is the new homotopy of this composite map. And this is given uh, by the composite X goes to B O N goes to B C two. Okay. Sorry for for the mess. I got a bit confused trying to prove the wrong statement. Uh, that happens. I'm afraid more often than I would like. But okay. Since I made a mess, let me go back here. So we have maps from the Tom spectrum to sigma n x. Sigma and HZ, that's the same thing as this limit. And I guess the, the neat way of saying this is that this map, yeah, let me, the neat way of saying this is that this space of maps 
sorry, S V X sigma and H Z. is the same thing as the set H and S. The discrete set and the space of generators, the subspace of generators is the same thing as home and isomorphism from this guy. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. And so giving a, a point here is the same thing as giving a null homotopy of these maps. Ooh. Sorry, this was supposed to be a simple example and I made a huge mess, but okay. But what it boils down to is this notion of uh, orientation is the same. By the way, since I am at it, let me also mention that this map here, that's always defined, and I claim an orientation is new homotopy of, also classifies a covering space, because as we have seen some time ago, maps into B sigma n are the same thing as n cheated covering spaces. And this is what's called uh, the orientation space of, uh, of, your, of your vector bundle, and, uh, and an orientation is exactly a section of that guy which is another way of formulating uh, orientations of vector bundles uh, that you might or may not have seen. But since it, it shows up so neatly here, I thought I'd mention, about, I'd mention it. OK, sorry, I have a question. So I, I can completely follow you like this, this chain of equivalences until that tomb glasses are the same thing as natural isomorphisms from the constant functor set to this functor x to h tilde n. Yes. And how do you? Um... Okay. Let, let me let me. So this is a natural transformation from in functors from x to three z modules of rank one. Okay. It's, natural trans it's a mapping space in this functor category. Mm -hmm. And let me notice that this X is a groupoid. Right? So this lands in the, in fact, in the maximal subgroupoid of this category. And so that's the same thing as fun X to BC2, because this groupoid is just BC2. Because if you have a free Z module of rank one, you have only one possible isomorphism class and C2 as automorphisms. And that's the same thing as maps from X to B, C2. And now I made a bit of a mess, but I'm arguing that this, this functor that goes from X to H tilde N S V X actually factors through B O N because after all, Vx only depends on the point in BON. And these, and ON is acting here exactly as the determinant. So this map corresponds to the composite X, B, O, N, B, C, 2. OK. On the other hand, the constant map at Z, uh, at Z is just, you know, the, the constant map. It's the, the constant map at the base point because Z is the base point of this group. Body. So a homotopy between these two things is, exact, is exactly a null homotopy of this composite. Again, sorry for the, the confusion I made here. I got sidetracked and trying to prove the wrong thing for one second. Yeah. 
is this argument convincing? Um, yes, I, I think now I can digest it later. This is, by the way, one of those arguments that are, would be a lot easier if I were allowed to say the word infinity ring spectrum. Uh, because this is essentially based on the fact that this C2 here is just GL1 of Z secretly. But uh, yeah, as I said, I'm going to, to follow the traditional strategy and use only homotopy ring spectra here. And, and let me put it, it's you know, already way over time, but let me put it as an exercise, R discrete ring, uh, V is HR orientable, if and only if the, the map X, B, O, N, B, G, L, one of R is null homotopic. And now you can see that when R was F2, well, not much interesting happens. And in fact, secretly, the case of HZ and the case of, of HF2 are the only two interesting cases, as you probably have seen before. But OK. Let me finish here and I'll start on Monday with the Tom isomorphism. And then, we'll even if it's kind of weird because it's the very last topic and then we change slightly. But unfortunately, I didn't end this class very well, apparently. So let me stop the recording.